determined who came out to this meeting and those joining us online. We're just going to give it a minute while this sets up because we know some people were texting and messaging that they were going to participate via an online forum today. So I want to give them just a quick second to come out here. But I want to thank those of you who did to coming out to City on Rising. My name is John Doyle. For those who don't know me, I also want to acknowledge our board members present today, Kim Woodruff, Millie Perez, Louisa Benedetto. We may be joined by a few others as the meeting goes on. Um, a lot going on in the community. I am not, if you've emailed me in the last week, I am not fully up to speed. I was away for a few days, so it is entirely possible that uh, <laughs> I have not, uh, I've not responded to your emails, but I did go through the email box for Rising, as well as our one that we do our e-blasts out from, so if you emailed through those ones, I have your commentary in here, but if you emailed me personally, bear with me, I'll be up to speed by Friday. Um, so first things first, we had a really successful emergency uh, preparedness meeting uh, on October 24th. We had representatives from FEMA, we had representatives from Department of Health, we had representatives from uh, Jacoby Hospital, where I work, but we brought in people. We're gonna be doing a COAD, that's a community organization active in disasters, and then eventually we wanna kind of level up to CERT training, which is what we're planning to do, CERT being community emergency response teams. Uh, OEM, which is the Office of Emergency Management in the city, has recognized that City Island possesses a uh, unique threat uh, from climate change, the weather, the elements, what have you, and they are willing to do a CERT team so long as we can gather up 30 people who can all meet on the same day. We're still trying to get that critical mass, but I think the fact we hit 40 people and someone from the emergency uh, uh, management team was here definitely was an impressive showing. It's even more impressive considering I think there were two other events going on in City Island at the same time. So we definitely uh, made an impression there. FEMA was also there. I don't think I said that earlier. And they're gonna be a part of this. And they have a lot of different trainings. So we'll be building on that. Uh, Senator Fernandez's office, which couldn't be here tonight, they have reached out, they wanna be helpful. So um, they've been reaching out to the state counterparts to play a constructive role. We're gonna be sending out a survey to those 40 people as well as the 20 plus who signed up for a CERT team because we want to keep these people active, grow out the group, and eventually we get 30 people going on the same day, we'll probably branch out to a CERT, but for now, we're going to keep it co-ed, and our first activity is going to be a CPR class, which we're going to get it for certification. And we're working with our partners. Probably, I'm going to try to do it before the end of the year, but if not, it'll be early January, because I know the holidays are coming up. We have Thanksgiving, we have all that stuff and things uh, move quickly. Finally, um, on this topic at least, there was the Waterfront Alliance had a, uh, had a uh, summit on emergency preparedness among other things. Uh, I was there as well as uh, uh, Ms. Heil from PS175, she was there as well to talk about kind of their workings with the Oyster Project and everything else. So City Island was well represented in that room and a lot of great connections were made, so to be continued as to what comes to fruition there. Uh, the ferry and extending the ferry to City Island, which has been a focal point of this group. We, uh, we were featured on News 12 recently, and another op-ed went out on the Waterfront Alliance's website, which we'll be sending out to everyone. So just uh, stay tuned on that. Also, um, the way we have everything set up, we're we're getting, we know that a lot of those emails that are going out to elected officials and other stakeholders have been picking up. So if you haven't done it yet, you can go to yescityislandferry.com. You sign up, you do the petition, and you do the web form, because the web form goes to all the elected officials. And I have had elected officials tell me the web form has been a motivational tactic, <laughs> or a motivational tool, rather, for us to... Uh, to continue to, to move people, hopefully, in the right direction. Phil. Phil. Yeah, John, uh, the, the, we have to sign it again for Christy Marmorado. I mean, she's just recently elected. Very good point. I don't think so, because what we're going to do is every time you sign that form, an email goes to City Island Rising. So we have 
all hundred plus of those forms sitting there and those will go over right in the change of administrations. She needs, she needs yes, I agree. I, I, and actually, I appreciate, not only do I appreciate that, but, um, and for those who are watching online, someone just mentioned that we have a new council member coming in in January. Um, just so you know, actually, some city islanders reached out to her via her online platform, and uh, this was pre-November 7th, and she pledged she would keep an open mind on that topic going forward. So it, you can do that as well, but uh, just so you know, other people did do it, and uh, anything that moves, whoever you are, what your politics are, we're here for the community. If we can move people in a more productive way for the community, no matter who they are, we support that. Um, I also want to point out uh, about the ferry is that there's a lot of discussion going on in Throg's Neck right now because they just put in a uh, trolley to try to bring people to and from the ferry. But their ferry was similar, uh, you know, it was kind of removed from the community through a park, through a highway, through all these other things. And that's kind of another reason why we need the ferry here rather than to put it somewhere else, even if it was feasible to put it somewhere else. Because when you put it off the beaten path, none of these storefronts see the revitalization. And then if public transportation doesn't run there, it becomes a real problem. Yeah. So kind of, we need to learn the lessons of Throg's Neck, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But Phil, I appreciate that, absolutely. Uh, food donations, we had a, um, there's a nonprofit, it's called Grassroots Groceries. Uh, what they do is they have a partnership with the uh, Hunts Point Market and the leftover produce that they get is given to this uh, group, Grassroots Groceries, and distributed to different areas of the city where there are hunger issues. Thanks to the good work that our uh, neighbors have been doing and friends have been doing with the Anchor Fridge, City Island has reached that radar that some people here are food insecure, and we are now partnering with them. We actually have the first shipment of groceries coming in tomorrow. So if you are in need of groceries, City Island Rising at gmail.com. All, all the information given is confidential. It doesn't go on any sort of external list. And we will either drop them off to you or can communicate with you where you can pick them up. But this is part of our ongoing efforts. As everyone remembers, we raised over $6,000 with Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez's office for food insecurity on City Island. It was one of her Thanksgiving uh, uh, donation drives last year. We also secured a donation from the Home Depot to give a freezer to the Methodist Church. So now the Methodist Church, what they're able to, I'm sorry, yes, yes yeah. that is the Methodist Church, yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, Trinity, because they can now freeze any meats they get and give that out to families in need. So we're able to facilitate that donation as well. And David Diaz, who sits on our board, who will be coming here soon, he is very active in all of that. He's, he's kind of the one who's, uh, been feeding anyone on City Island who needs food, and that's a very uh, admirable thing. Uh, and again, if anyone, just to re-emphasize, if people are food insecure or can pair up, you know, give us information for someone who is food insecure, they can email us at cityislandrising at gmail.com. We do ask that if you're going to refer someone else, you got to give us some sort of contact information, because otherwise that person either may not be food insecure or they may not want the food right now for whatever their reason, and I'm, you know, no judgment, no judgment rendered here. But we have to be very careful to make sure we are treating everyone with respect, and if they need that resource, that we can reach out to them. Because if we can't get them the food, it's not, it's no good to them. Uh, the deputy mayor letter. Everyone remembers we wrote to the deputy mayor concerning all the flooding issues on the island. We received a response, which was uh, not great, but not terrible, but she did offer to come and send her office here, and we are planning a date now. It has to be the, the, um, the variable that, that is problematic here is just, we have to do it a few days after it heavy rains, so that way they can see the problem, so it is a weather-dependent meeting, and similar to, as we all know, with city island traffic, if it's a sunny day, there's traffic. If there's a rainy day, there's no traffic, so we've got to prepare that a little bit, but we're working forward on that. Um, our cleanup on November 4th was also successful. I want to thank everybody who came out for that. Kim, Stephen, and uh, Jeff Cunningham from our board who ran it. It was a really, really good event. 20 people showed up, and over 30 bags of garbage were 
yeah. uh, removed from. I think I found like four shoes, several <laughs> shirts. Yeah. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. It was pretty There gross. were a lot of shoes. I didn't like, even mention that. Yeah, I don't know why there were so many shoes. People had just gone barefoot at the <laughs> beach and just leaving the shoes there or what, what have you. But yeah, but it was, a, it was a good event. There were a lot of kids helping out, uh, people from all uh, ranges. So we definitely want to continue that. And there's work with uh, one, one of the Boy Scouts who's doing his uh, service badge. There's going to be a... Uh, there's going to be another service day, like a sweep of City Island, particularly down on this end of the island. So we'll have much more of different ways for people to participate and, uh, and contribute to the improvement of the island. Miniford Avenue. Does anyone here live off of Miniford Avenue by chance? I do. They have fell? Great. I love that. Um, so there is a meeting being set up uh, with DDC. Several of the streets on Miniford by Bridge Street. Terrace Street, Sutherland Street are undergoing sewer reconstruction. This will help with some of the flooding on that end of the island. It is unfortunately not going to Cross Street, which is one of the worst flooding locations on the island, but we are, those conversations are starting. The meeting is on November 21st. Let's connect offline, because maybe you can come to the meeting with us. And then on our board, I'm trying to think if anybody lives immediately off Miniford. We'll figure it out, but the point is that if there is an interest in it, let me know, because we probably can get a few people in there, maybe during the day, so I hope that's not a problem for you, but uh, we'll figure that out. On Rodman's Neck, uh, we did get an update on Rodman's Neck. It's mixed. Hold on, I'm going to pull it up here, because I want to make sure I'm reading exactly what was given and approved here. So, hold on one second here. See here, all seems correct. Good. Okay, Rodman's neck will be headed uh, towards instead of it. Remember, everyone remembers it was going out for. Uh, it was going out for bid for the. So now Rodman's neck will be headed towards a construction management build program. This was a decision made internally by the City Law Department and the City Comptroller's Office, which both approved. This is not a change in design for the range, but it allows the City to select a construction team that offers the best value, as opposed to going for the cheapest bid, which is usually what an RFP is. Um, it will also allow the range to stay in operation during construction. This will, unfortunately, move the time, timeline back a year, with requests for proposals coming in the spring and summer of... Uh, of uh, 2024 with a bid coming back in the fall. The construction is estimated to start in 2025. So it pushes things back a year, but as uh, somebody who follows some of the other projects in the area, if anyone's followed um, Pelham Parkway, the people, they remember they did the south side of Pelham Parkway and the potholes restarted and everything else, and people were not happy with the construction of Pelham Parkway. A year later, they put out the bid for the north side of Palm Parkway, and the same vendor got the contract because they only really judge on who's the best value for the city. So design management build provides that the city will choose instead somebody who is the best quality. So it may be good for us in the long term, and it allows for change elements of the contract to go back quicker. And again, we will be watching that contract. We'll be communicating with our city representatives about that contract, and we have as has been discussed here before. We do have state legislation at both the assembly and senate level to provide greater oversight of the range that we will be championing as well. So, full on to be continued there. 80, 83 or 85 percent of it will be enclosed. We, this, is, this is one of our battles right now, Steve. We have, um, we have at first it was gonna be 66 percent enclosed, then we argued with them, and they went up to 100% enclosed. Then COVID happened, they came back to 85% enclosed. So we're going to have to follow that. The legislation requires 100% enclosure, so that's something we want to push. And if, maybe if we show that there's um, a realistic chance of that passing, the city may just be like, we don't want to be in non-compliance. Let's, let's move forward here. Uh, next up is Heart Island Tours. You can sign up for a tour of Heart Island. 
They wanted to do this to decrease some of the stigmatization of Heart Island, which we're all familiar with. Uh, you go to nyc.gov slash Heart Island. It's right on the agenda sheet, so you can sign up. They're going to be doing tours, I believe, twice a month. So if you don't get this tour, hang tight, put something in your calendar, check it out next month, and you'll be able to sign up. Again, this is not anticipated to bring massive crowds to the island. It's not a concert or anything. Are they going to let people walk? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I think it's a guided tour, but... We'll, we'll I see. know when we went, we were in that bus, they wouldn't let us out of it. Yes, yes. Um, I don't know. You know what? I will, I will ask on that one. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, next, for those who have uh, four-legged friends, and there are many among us who do, uh, there's still talk going on about the dog run for the island. We have a commit. Uh, we have a person volunteer set up who is working on that. We. Uh, We've gotten commitment. There's already supposedly several hundred thousand dollars sitting around from council member Jimmy Vaca, who was last in office about eight years ago. He left about, I want to say, somewhere between five hundred and seven thousand, seven hundred thousand dollars for a dog run, which sounds like a lot of money, but the way the city builds, it is not a lot of money. Uh, even a bathroom in a city park nowadays runs upwards of one or two million dollars, just to put it in context for you. And that's not a golden Trump bathroom. That's a regular people person bathroom. Um, so we have seven hundred thousand uh, dollars that we anticipate five to seven hundred that we anticipate being there. If it hasn't been swept, we had um, discussions with, with our assembly member, assembly member Benedetto. He is interested in putting more money towards the dog run, and we have a meeting with Senator Fernandez as well for the same thing. So this is going to be located. That is the problem. Um, right now, I think from what has. Because we had uh, a person who really championed this about seven or eight years ago, and she had done a lot of the groundwork, secured a lot of the funding. She was on CB10. She then moved out of the neighborhood. Um, we've met with her. She believes probably the, the consensus spot would be Catherine Scott Promenade, if they can segregate a small area there for a dog run. We shall see. Again, it is still in development, but... Maybe there, maybe on the other side of the bridge, who knows. But we, we are pushing for a dog run on the island. Um, cannabis license. Has anyone here, has everyone here heard about a, the cannabis license? Okay. I put this on here. There's a meeting. It was supposed to be Monday, but then it was rescheduled. There's a lot of uh, talk and in, innuendo about what it is, what it isn't. So I just wanted to use this, no matter what your feelings are about marijuana legalization, to say what it is. This is not going to be a retail site where they sell it on spot, and it is not going to be a consumption site. This is where it's just gonna be industrialized and uh, you know, kind of uh, packed or whatever have you, or farmed. It's not going to be a site where people show up. So a lot of people seem to think that this is going to be some sort of mass pot dispensary. It's a private home. Right? Uh, no, it's, oh, it's it's a private property. It's I don't I don't think it's a home, but it's uh, it's uh, I think it's a lot actually. But the the point uh, no. Oh, I, it's I, an empty lot. Yeah, I think it's a lot. I, I don't know if it's empty. I think it was previously used for marina purposes. We can double check that. I'm interested in doing some sort of maybe uh, some sort of social media on this so people know what it is and what it isn't. Because I think sometimes, and we always talk about this. There's the current, which is you know somewhat the official newspaper of the island, and then there's the undercurrent, which is the stories you can never believe about the island, and uh, sometimes it is helpful to combat that stuff and to uh, to do things that you know make sure people are informed. So I will, um, I think if we start doing more with our social media presence, and we're committed to doing that, this might be a good thing to push through in terms of this is what they're discussing, this is what it is, this is what it isn't, so people are well informed. Um, undergrounding the electrical lines. This is a long-term project. We've been working with uh, the Congresswoman's office on this. There is money in the bipartisan infrastructure bill to do this. We've had meetings with Con Edison about this. Um, where we are right now is that Con Edison put in a proposal that included City Island. It wasn't accepted in the first round, but there are many other rounds, and there are many other grant opportunities. So the Congresswoman, uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez's office has been very on top of this, and she is, um, her staff is 
tracking all these grants and really pushing Con Edison to do this and reached out to City Hall to make sure the mayor is also putting this, uh, prioritizing this. So we're grateful for that. Um, also on the climate front, at, and everyone here knows we have the, uh, the flood sensors on the island. We have four right now. They're probably going to put in another three in Pelham Bay Park. And then we're going to move along the Throx next shoreline. Next month, we're probably going to have a guest from FloodNet New York to discuss all this. Um, so what I want you all to know is that the flood sensors at the end of the September storm, which everyone remembers, estimated that Ditmar Street got 12 inches of rain, which set off a lot of alarm bells downtown, which is good in the sense of we have these flood sensors and we take these photos to get people's attention. And uh, the community board reached out and they asked us where were some places where people would want um, rain gardens. Rain gardens basically, you've probably seen them in other neighborhoods. It's like an interesting curb design and the purpose is they have plant life there and small trees that it acts like a sponge, if you will, to suck up a lot of the moisture as it comes in. So we gave a few locations, one's on Tier Street, one's on uh, Ditmar's, and I think there was one other one, and they're in the community board's uh, capital S. So the important reason I bring this up is just we're working with everybody, we're getting these things documented, so hopefully a city agency will pick up on them. Next up, and this one is not quite as successful, urgent care. We have been really trying on urgent care to get an urgent care in the neighborhood, <coughs> uh, speaking to different partners in the healthcare field. We're now looking into, basically because it's only 4,500 people, that um, limits some of our options. So what we're trying to do is, uh, what we're trying to do is find what grants are available at the city, state, and federal level to, to augment that. Because maybe there is, you know, there's a lot of uh, little small towns upstate where 4,500 people be considered a city in their eyes. So we're trying to see what we're available to in a remote location to try to do more there. Um, we've had some meetings on the climate front as well. I should have put this with the other stuff. I know I'm kind of jumping between healthcare and climate again. Uh, but we had some good meetings with... Um, we Act, which is a Harlem and Uptown-based nonprofit that does a lot of great work on the environment. They recently just hosted Al Gore for a summit. So we're in communications with them because they're intended to be a major recipient of uh, some of the federal funding that's coming down. They've been kind of like pre-cleared as like a major conduit. So we're going to be working with them to build a relationship. And from that relationship, we're hoping that we'll be able to... Uh, to bring some funds back to the community and you know, kind of put red flags on issues that need to be further addressed. And then with DEC, there is a lead climate resiliency officer for the entire state who um, was at the Green Bond hearings and we had a conference call with her and she's kind of advising us on what flags we should be pushing for our elected officials and other people to try to get funding for, because again, a lot of federal and state funding through the infrastructure bill, through the Inflation Reduction Act, which is basically a health care and climate bill, and the Green Bond Initiative, $4 billion is supposed to come down from the state government. So we are trying to make sure City Island and regional-based projects that benefit City Island are on those lists. Um, this, or, go ahead. We Act, yeah, that's the name of the nonprofit. Yeah, it's, it based, it's based out of Harlem and uh, Uptown Manhattan. But um, if you want, I can send you, they have a great mailing list. It's filled with helpful information. So, you know, if it's a, if it's a passion or an interest in Okay, no worries. Um, curb cuts on sidewalks. This has been something brought up because the curb, everyone saw they put new curb cuts up. Some of the kids uh, did some interesting uh, artwork on that concrete. Uh, with some unrealistic expectations perhaps on some other people. Um, having said that, the uh, people were asking why the curb cuts, which are supposed to be level with the ground, are not level with the ground. And just actually the other day, they started showing everybody they're putting blacktop over there and raising it. So basically it's supposed to be like a, almost a ramp, if you will, to help people narrowly 
uh, well, it would, you know, incrementally cross the curb if they're in a wheelchair, if they have a walker, if they have a scooter, what have you. And uh, DOT stuff, we had an email about our DOT stuff, which we're still working on. We have a lot of requests in. And they asked if we could try to invite the new commissioner who was just appointed last week because uh, we had the old commissioner here, or the commissioner, the, the last permanent commissioner we had here at a meeting, and we'll be working on that because we had a good, good nice meeting when we did that. Um, does anyone have any questions on any of that? Because I, yes. Does the city decide when to pave things? Is there any order mm -hmm. whatsoever? I mean, how does it get decided? No. Because we, they did like a really shoddy job of paving like 20 feet of road by the circle. Oh, yes. And I just don't understand what the major malfunction is. <laughs> Like, I know we put in requests for things that are, you know, above and beyond, but why should we have to be pushing to get the road paved? I totally agree with that. Like, I would as, like as to they know say, how it all works. I, I understand and I agree with you. It's funny, with that old expression, what's it? First off, let's ask for straight criteria. I did write, when you speak, I am writing it down, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask them what the standard criteria are and how we're not meeting it. I will point out, there's that old saying, uh, Success has many uh, parents, but failure is an orphan. And it was funny, when the roads started getting repaving, everyone was responsible for that. And then when it stopped getting, oh, I don't know anything about that. So we have to, we have to bring DOT back. I mean, all I know is they put that light up yes. in like two seconds. Oh, yes. But they didn't. Which I know. Note, which, I mean, I don't know who asked for it, but uh, it, I, I it, it went up very quickly. Yes. Uh, but I would prefer a paved road. To a light. I, I don't mind the light. I, I would like me too. not to drive through potholes every single day. I think this is a great thing <laughs> to get more information on. I also think it's a great thing to bring to the new commissioner if he'll agree to come to a meeting. So both great things to ask and follow up on. It just seems like the city would have like a schedule, like about they, they do. They have like all the streets, and then you know every X number of years yeah. they get to all the streets somehow they do have some sort of schedule like that. that they give to the community boards for repaving remilling all that stuff and I think it's a certain number of streets in every borough am I correct in that yeah okay uh, but we'll we'll follow up on that because that's a, that's a very good question we need some good answers elected officials we don't have any elected officials today so we're gonna skip that part open floor for community concerns does anyone have anything Stephen. Uh, since the garbage collection on Orchard Beach was so successful, yeah. I was hoping that we might be able to do the same kind of thing along City Island Avenue. Sure. From front, from the bridge all the way down on both sides of the street on a particular day. Yep, yep. And the second thing is, is it possible to ask the Department of Sanitation when they I know we don't get any sweepers, mm -hmm. but when they come by, I have to be some kind of schedule where even though there are cars parked or whatever, where are there are no park cars parked, perhaps they could come once a month, once every other yeah. week, and do the avenue as well as the uh, individual streets. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. It's been an ongoing, I think, 20-year debate on the island for alternate side parking. Well, I'm not asking for yeah. alternate side parking. Yeah. I'm just asking for where there's, if, there's, if they can bring a sweeper down yeah. and where there's an opening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can have, have then go first Thursday, seat. that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Know, yeah. Once a month, once every other month. Or and even, as, even on the, the regular streets. I know there's parking on one side, mm -hmm. but on the opposite side, they yeah. might be able to come down with the sweeper. It's not a bad idea. I have. I do see once in a while they do bring the sweeper out very late at night. I'm a little bit of a night owl, so I do observe those things. But they should have a more regular schedule, and let's talk to them on that. With respect to the sweep of the island, the Boy Scouts are working on it, but I will um, flag that for you because we'd love for you to be part of that. They actually did have a date. Have they're running that. It's one of the Boy Scouts doing a service project, and we will partner to okay. bring some stuff and be helpful in any way, anywhere we're asked to. Does anyone else have any sort of open 
I don't want to say open mic, but you know, uh, open question period. Does anyone else have anything? Okay. Uh, the old business are things I really have not, and, and the team here really hasn't gotten around to uh, to furthering since our last meeting. Uh, so we're still working on a substance abuse panel. As I said at the last meeting, it's going to probably be in the beginning of the year, which is good because it'll be after the holidays and uh, be, a, I think, a good way to start off the year. And a lot of people do struggle, particularly with addiction, during the holiday times. So this will be a good, uh, I think, a very timely uh, forum for that. The welcoming committee, we're still getting on top of the welcoming committee. If you'd like to be a part of it, we're going to give out some sort of little tchotchke, we're not sure yet, as well as brochures and everything else. So uh, let me know if you'd like to be a part of that, because we've done it before. It's very nice. People like when they move here to feel welcomed and, you know, that the community is accepting of them and their ideas and their ideas to uh, or their wishes to improve the community. And as many people here know, including a few of our signups over here, Adopt a Block continues. We've given out almost 20 uh, different supplies. We still have more supplies to go. So if you need brooms, you need garbage bags, you need, uh, and we will get you those, uh, trash pickers, hedge clippers, uh, hedge clippers. And we do have, um, we do have weed whackers that we can loan out to people who are in the program. We just can't, we've only got five, four of them now, or five of them, I guess, now. So we, we've got to just give them to you for a day, and then, then you give them back when you're done with them. And that's the way we're going to kind of, and probably need to make you sign a waiver, God forbid you, you know, hack something. Uh, we don't want to get sued. Uh, Beverly, who's our lawyer, uh, yeah, had another uh, engagement tonight, but you, she would be jumping on me to say, don't give that out without a waiver. So we will um, not do that. And then... Um, Yes, and then also uh, we're going to find a day to get out there because everyone knows the weeds grow along the bridge and we'll go out there and we'll weed whack some of that area. Um, so that's, uh, that's that. And then finally, uh, as everyone knows, Abby, who's usually at our meetings, not here tonight, but she just ran the New York City Marathon, which is an incredible accomplishment, relatively new uh, Newcomer to the island, but definitely a wonderful person who we're lucky to have as part of our group. So we want to acknowledge her, also as um, not really a member of our group, but longtime city islander, uh, Mike Rao, who's, uh, I think it's like his 40th marathon, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. He runs every year. God bless him. You know, some of us don't even wake up till noon on Saturdays, and this guy's <laughs> crossing 12 miles, if even more than that. So we want to thank, uh, well, acknowledge all of the uh, the Islanders who either participated or tried to participate. Uh, great thing. And uh, does anyone else have anything before we close? Anything online, Kim? We are good then. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. Thanks for bearing with us with our little technical difficulties. And uh, we appreciate you. Thanks so much.